In modern life, we rely on prepackaged foods and products that are ready to eat with very little effort. But with continually increasing demand, it would be impossible for companies to produce enough without the assistance of industrial scale machinery. To make things we love at scale, people have had to come up with ingenious types of food machines, from bottling machines to slicers, peelers, and molders. Sit back and relax and put your apron on as we take a look at the 15 most satisfying food industry machines. Number 15, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are one of the true pleasures in life, but long gone are the days that you needed a separate jar of peanut butter and jelly to be able to make them. Some companies have found a way to combine the two, but have you ever wondered how they managed to fill a jar with alternating amounts of each? The answer is a machine like this, which is called the Volumetric Rotary Six Station Filling Machine. At first, the jars are sterilized and taken along a conveyor before they're placed into the machine that can hold six of them at a time. The filling nozzle then lowers down into the jar and itself has up to 12 filling tubes that feed into it. They alternate between the ones that provide the pre-made peanut butter and those that provide a smaller quantity of jelly. And as the nozzle raises up and twists within the jar, they deposit their product in a way that gives the perfect amount of each and forms the striped appearance at the edge of the glass. After this, it's simply a case of taking the jars to the next station where the lids are attached, and then they apply the labels, and then they're ready to be sent to the store shelves and into homes, where you get a perfect blend of PB&J with every scoop. Number 14. Vegetable Washer Vegetables are arguably the most important and nutritious parts of any balanced and healthy diet, but the process of growing them from seeds to the ones you see on store shelves can be a complicated one. Of course, it takes months for farmers to grow them to the required size and for them to ripen, and then they're harvested by huge machines that can detach from their vines or even lift them out from beneath the ground. When you do this, though, the vegetables are normally covered in dirt, and while a lot of people would see this as a sign of freshness and happily wash them at home, most stores have found that customers tend to pick the cleanest ones from the shelves in the first place. This means there's usually an extra step to wash the produce, and not only does this remove any dirt, but it also takes off any remaining chemicals that were used during farming, and insects that may be present too. This machine is called a brush industrial washing machine, and it begins by separating the vegetables as they're lifted up onto the conveyor. Each one is treated carefully so it isn't damaged and passed onto the washing area where it's sprayed with water and rolled around on soft brushes to ensure every rogue particle is removed. Machines like this can clean a range of different vegetables and fruits, such as tomatoes, apples, potatoes, and carrots, and substantially reduce the amount of time it would have previously taken to do this by hand. Number 13, Bubblegum Balls. Amazingly, it's believed that 374 billion pieces of gum are sold around the world each year, which represents 187 billion hours of chewing if each piece is chewed for 30 minutes. And it almost feels as if there's just as many different types and flavors on offer. One of the most popular, though, are bubblegum balls, which can often be bought out of machines, are brightly colored with a range of flavors, and can be used to blow huge bubbles in front of your face. But have you ever thought about how products like these are made? It's typically a two-step process, whereby machines are used to make a common gummy center to the ball, and then these are covered in a sugary outer layer. The process of making the actual gum part is the most satisfying, though, and begins with a long gray piece of gum. It's shaped into a tube and then cut by a machine so it can be put into position. And then, almost quicker than the eye can see, this is dropped into the lower position and then sliced into multiple pieces that fall into molds that then compress and turn them to create a spherical shape. These are then released to roll down a ramp where they'll be checked and collected before moving on to the next stage. These form the basis of the bubblegum balls. They're soft and have no noticeable flavor at this stage. It's only when the colorful glaze is added that the taste is added, and they harden enough to give that crunch when you first put it in your mouth. Number 12, Golden Chocolate Bunnies. The Lint Gold Bunnies are probably one of the most famous chocolate products around the world, but if there's one thing more pleasurable than unwrapping and eating one of them, then it's probably seeing how they're made in the first place. Each of the bunnies is hollow with thick walls, and they're made with Lint's secret chocolate recipe. Once this has been made and it's still liquid, it's used to fill row after row of bunny molds as they pass through the production line. Of course, each of these molds only makes up half of the bunny, and rather than waiting for them to solidify and then sticking them together, Lint has developed a clever way of making the rabbit whole. The machine combines two of the molds quickly by flipping an empty one on top of the other that's been filled. 
and then these two molds are tightly clamped together. They pass into a section of the machine where they're spun around together using centrifugal force to push the chocolate into all the parts of both sides and to create the hollowness in the center. And while this is happening, they're slowly cooled. Eventually, the rabbits are ready to emerge and be wrapped in the signature golden foil. Then they're shipped and ready to eat. Number 11. Pie Machine Pies are a favorite snack around the world, and no matter what your preferred filling may be, the process follows the same basic steps wherever you go. First, the foil trays of various different sizes are loaded into the machine, and then a dollop of pastry is dropped into each one. Further down the line, a stamping device is used to evenly spread the pastry around the casing, and is often slightly baked to prepare it for the filling. Next, the casings pass under the filling machines, which deliver a carefully measured amount of the required filling. And then, a thin sheet of pastry is layered over the top, before cutters are used to form lids that perfectly fit over. All that's left is to fully cook the pie so they're ready to eat, and then they can be packaged and sent to a store near you. Number 10. Ice Cream On a hot summer's day, there's nothing quite as pleasurable as treating yourself to some ice cream. And it's so popular that around 6.4 billion pounds, or 2.9 billion kilos of it, are sold each year in the U.S. alone. Ice cream production is a serious business, and manufacturers have perfected their machine to ensure that each tub is just as delicious as the next. The first thing they have to do is to prepare all of the ingredients. Of course, there's the base ice cream that goes into each flavor, but also elements such as cookies and cream, or fruits, that have to be crushed up and mixed with soft ice cream before it can be poured into each tub and then sent to be frozen. Huge vats are used to blend other flavors like pistachio or mint, and to add chocolate flakes. And one of the tricks used by the industry is to twist the tub as the ice cream is being added to make sure it's evenly distributed and properly filled. Factories don't just produce tubs of ice cream, though, and have machines that produce lollies that are frozen in molds and then dipped into coatings depending on their flavor. And what's most impressive is that humans are only needed to oversee the process with everything, including the final packaging, dealt with automatically. Number 9. Frozen Meat Slicer on average, in the United States, each person consumes around 274 pounds or about 124 kilos of meat every year. And this represents one of the largest parts of the food industry. With so much needing to be processed, it would be impossible for this to be all done by hand. So while some elements need to be carried out by people, large parts are now automated. Once the meat has been taken from a carcass, the nicest cuts are often hanged and sent off straight away, but other parts are frozen. This helps prolong the shelf life, but also to process it, and it's at this point it'll be sent to a frozen meat slicer. Here, large blocks are held in place by paddles with tiny spikes on them, similar to ice shoes, and once it's secured, it can be passed through the machine where a sharp blade is lowered to slice it to a predetermined width. The same process can be used for all different types of meats, and once manageable slices have been cut, they're ready to be packaged, defrosted, and sold as individual portions in stores. Number 8. Popcorn Machine As one of the most profitable foods of all, it's perhaps no surprise that companies try to sell as much popcorn as possible. We mainly, of course, think of it as something for the movie theater, where you'll often see a small popping machine that makes it fresh. But if you ever buy it from a bag or in a store, the chances are it's been made by something on a much larger scale. This popcorn production line, for example, is marketed by a Chinese company as an entry-level model, with far larger ones available if you need to make far larger volumes. It begins with a giant popping machine that can handle far more than your typical theater version can, and because of the way it works, will pop all of the corn in a matter of seconds. It's perfectly designed, too, so once this is done, it can be lifted up, tilted, so all of the corn slides onto the nearby conveyor belt, and then it can be put back into position to start the process all over again. Once on the conveyor, the popcorn is first taken through a cooling unit, and then is taken up an elevator into a rotary drum with mesh that prevents it from caking and stops pieces from sticking to each other. Once it's emerged from the other end of the drum, it's then ready for the flavor to be added and to be packaged, which, if done in vacuum bags, will keep this popcorn fresh for at least a few months. Number 7. Hot Dogs It's been estimated that as many as 20 billion hot dogs are consumed per year in the United States, which averages to around 70 per person. There's no doubt, then, that they're one of the nation's favorite foods, and while most people are accepting of the fact that they aren't exactly made with the finest of ingredients, the process of making them is far more satisfying than you'd expect. 
The first stage is to make the mix of the hot dog meat, and to do this, manufacturers often take the discarded meat that can't be used elsewhere. Boneless beef, pork offcuts, and chicken can be used, and it's all put into a machine that grinds it down into a thick paste. Next, flavorings such as starch, salt, and mustard are added and mixed into the paste with water, and now the hot dog filling is complete. As with other types of sausage, the paste is then passed into the casings, and they're spun to create hot dogs of even lengths, and then they're even hung and cooked in industrial-sized ovens. After this, they're cleaned, sorted, checked, and then packaged, ready to sit on a store shelf as long as is needed before you buy them and reheat them. Number 6. Commercial Potato Peeler Potatoes are an extremely important food for recipes around the world, but as you probably know from cooking at home, it can be an extremely laborious process to peel all of those potatoes that you need. Imagine then the amount of time it would take to peel the potatoes at a restaurant that serves hundreds of people per day. Of course, some places choose to do this all by hand, but there is an alternative. You could instead buy pre-peeled potatoes to make it much simpler, and the companies that sell them use a commercial knife potato peeler to do all of that work. Essentially, this is a drum that has knife blades fixed around the outside and is then filled with a quantity of potatoes and some water. The center of the drum spins around, which forms a current in the water and makes the potatoes spin around the edge against the sharp blades. Bit by bit, they remove parts of the skin, and it's done gently enough that eventually all of the skins have been removed, and very little of the usable potato has been wasted. A peeler of this size will process up to 880 pounds, or about 400 kilos of potatoes per hour, so you can just imagine how many can be peeled by larger designs or a series of these working at once. Number 5. Peeps Every year in the U.S., when we approach Easter, the shelves of stores across the country are full of brightly colored marshmallow treats, and the nation goes crazy for peeps. Shaped into chicks, bunnies, and various other animals, they're made from sugar, corn syrup, gelatin, food dye, and salt. And because they're mainly popular during certain times of the year, the Peeps factory has to produce huge numbers of them in a very short amount of time. Once the ingredients have been blended together, they're put into molds to set and are then popped onto the factory's conveyor belts. The Peeps people say that this process is an industry secret, so have never allowed footage to be recorded of the actual molding process, but by far the most mesmerizing bit of it all comes after it anyway, when thousands upon thousands of them are passing along the factory line. They are then sprayed with more food coloring to give them their vibrancy that they're known for, and then the details, such as the eyes, are added. Finally, they're separated, and once they've dried, are lifted by machines into the packaging so they can be sealed and sent around the country. Number 4. Biscuit Cutter and Molder The biscuit and cookie market is one of the largest food industries in the world, worth around $160 billion per year in the U.S. alone. The machines that are used to perfectly produce them are extremely precise and efficient, and ensure that no ingredients go to waste at all. At first, the dough is made and rolled out into thin sheets across the rotary cutter machine. Rollers and presses are used to ensure it's exactly the right thickness and consistency. And once it is, a cutter rolls over the top to punch out all of the individual biscuits. This, of course, leaves a lot of leftover dough around where the circular shapes have been cut out, and this is then recycled back around and mixed back in with the dough at the start to maximize the number that are made from all of the ingredients. The cut biscuits are deposited on a new conveyor that takes them underneath a low heat oven, and by the time they emerge out the other side, they'll have all been evenly baked. Now it's simply a case of adding a glaze if needed and collecting a predetermined number of them so they can be packaged and sent to customers to chomp on. Number 3. Bacon Slicer Amazingly, around 908 million pounds or about 412 million kilos of bacon is sold in the U.S. each year, which equates to nearly 3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms per person. Factories work 24-7 to keep up with this demand, and it's led to the development of some extremely clever machinery to make the production process as simple and easy as possible. Almost everything here is automated. The pork or turkey meat is placed in a hopper, and the machine will automatically load them in by itself, with room for up to 12 bellies to be buffered at once so it can continually operate. Each piece is then individually passed along the line and lowered into the cutting machine that quickly cuts the thin slices, and by combining the speed of the cut and the speed of the meat passing through, can ensure that each slice is exactly the same size. This thickness can, of course, be altered depending on the end product that's required, and the machine can also scan the meat that's passing through it, so it can remove the end parts or bits that are too fatty. 
A single machine like this is able to produce up to 140 10-slice packs of bacon every minute, which means it can make more than 200,000 packs of bacon in a single day. Number 2. Ramen Machine after a long day, there's nothing quite as easy as preparing a bowl of ramen at home. After all, all you really need to do is add hot water. They're cheap to buy, tasting, and filling too. But the process of making them is surprisingly complex. At first, a huge vat of dough is made up, and then this is passed through the machines that stretch it and twist it before flattening it into one long sheet. This is carried along a conveyor where it's continuously manipulated to activate the ingredients and get it to the right consistency. And once it's ready, it's time to start cutting it. Rows upon rows of blades cut the dough lengthways at first to create long strings of noodles that pass through the machinery. At the end of this, they're then cut widthways to form it into manageable amounts. It's then cooked and tangled together, with further blades and separators used to identify each portion. And then the liquid is removed so they're ready to be packaged. Finally, each portion is completely separated from the rest and is passed along a conveyor to the packaging area, where it's dropped into bags with the flavorings that can be added when you come to cook it. Number 1. Jelly Bean Machine In a typical year, around 16 billion jelly beans will be bought and consumed by Americans, a sign that they're surely some of the best sugary treats available. Even though they're small, each one of these beans is made individually, and you may be surprised at how intensive a process their manufacturing is. To start with, the jelly bean mixture is made up. The ingredients for each type are the same up until a point, but a large part of the syrupy liquid is the colorings and flavorings that are specific to each flavor of bean. This is poured into a vat where it's churned and heated until it reaches the ideal consistency. And once it is, the machine drops tiny dollops of the mixture into the jelly bean molds that pass beneath it. Each one of these molds has space for a thousand jelly beans, and they'll be stacked in batches of 45 molds before being taken to cool. Once they're done, the molds are emptied into a rotary drum that spins the beans to ensure they're smooth all over, and then deposits them back onto a conveyor. From here, they're sorted and oriented into jelly bean-sized grooves so they can each be individually stamped with the company's logo. Once this has happened, the jelly bean is finished, but no one wants to buy a pack with just one flavor. The same thing has been happening all over the factory with all the different types, and the final stage is when they're all mixed together before being packaged. Now, in a blaze of color and a range of different flavors, they're carefully weighed and pushed into each box, which is then sealed and sent for shipping. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.